Hi everyone, <clears throat> Stepan here. I have the black pieces in this one and I've been waiting a long, long time. Uh, I'm going to play the... Oh, excuse me. Just, I actually have to answer this. Molim, reci tata brzo jer snimam video. Te ti si me zvao. Aha, ti si mene zvao prvi. Ajde, moram ići, bye. Ajde, bye. Bye. Sorry about this, I, I'm dealing with some family stuff and I got two calls from my dad and when I answered he didn't say anything so so sorry about this okay that's it we have the exchange card Khan. just give me a second to see if everything is okay okay he plays with h3 I'm gonna go g6 and bishop f5 uh, h3 prevents bishop g4 okay uh, Now queen b3 could be annoying. Uh, okay, I need to get into the game. I'm going to start thinking. If I do nothing and he plays queen b3 and I go queen c7, he has bishop f4 and on queen f4, queen b7. Uh, I could go queen c8, but that develops his bishop for free. So for now, I think I'm just gonna go bishop g7. I think that's the most sensible move on queen b3. I'm playing queen c8. He plays bishop f4 first, preventing queen c7. That's normal. Now I'm going to castle. Uh, now I could actually choose to go queen b6 myself before he can go queen b3. But I could also go knight e4 and e5. Of course, if that's taken, I can play d4, the knight goes to d2, I go e5. How good is that? I don't know. So my candidates are queen b6, rook c8, rook e8, knight e4. My opponent has a provisional rating, so he could be much stronger than this, and he's playing pretty quickly. I actually don't really like queen b6 all that much, because it blocks my b-pawn, so I would much prefer to play a6, b5, b4. And if I go a6 and he goes a4... Uh, then I could go knight e4, trying to dislodge the knight. I don't like queen b6. Because now on queen b3 I have b5, so he probably should go a4. Of course, I, I cannot get my rook to b8, so it's going to be hard to reinforce b5. So my, my ideas are b5, b4, and e5. If I can get in one of those, Of course, b4 undermines his center, and if I could get in both, then then this pawn chain would be pretty weak. That's what I have to be playing for here. If he plays knight h4, I think I can actually go bishop e6 instead of bishop d7. However strange that might seem. But if the knight cannot go to g5, harassing the bishop, the bishop is actually okay on e6 in some positions. And then my plan could be knight e4, f6, bishop f7, e5. And I may also have some ideas of rook c8, knight takes d4. 
with bishop c2 with a perpetual on the queen uh, but that's just a draw if he moves the knight of course so for example he castles okay i go rook c8 he goes rook e1 uh, I play something, he plays knight h4, I play knight d4. I actually drew a fide master like that. But now that he's, he's allowed b5, I am gonna jump in with b5. Because I don't see why not. That's a move I want to play. I want to fix the c pawn and I want to play b4 if I'm given the opportunity to do so. I realize that I've given up the c5 square. Wait, I don't understand queen b3. Why would he play queen b3? Does he want to go a4? If I go knight e4 and he goes a4, I go b4. He plays a takes b4. Uh, c takes b4, excuse me. I can play knight takes d2. If knight takes d2, then knight d4. If bishop takes d2, then still knight d4. And then knight d4, bishop d4. So I think that's okay. I don't get queen b3. <clears throat> it's I feel like the queen is misplaced on b3. Especially since I can play knight a5, knight c4. Wow. Okay, bishop e6. And if he takes on e4, I win a piece. Or knight d2 and on knight d2 bishop e6. I think I prefer bishop e6 immediately. Because he cannot take on e4. And he still doesn't have knight g5. Because uh, I can just take it. And now my plan is f6, bishop f7, e5. Or simply b4, because he cannot take now. I mean, he can, but if we trade his d4 pawn for my b5 pawn, that has to be a very favorable trade for me. I think g4 and queen b3 are at least uncalled for because g4 is an extremely weakening move and queen b3 seems misplaced. Of course, I cannot play f6 now because I, I would lose a piece because my bishop is then undefended. <coughs> So I'm guessing I have to trade now. I have to take on d2. If he takes with the bishop, I can jump in queen d6, simply grabbing the diagonal. So he probably takes with the knight. But then I can go b4. If 
If I'm him, I think I'm taking with the knight because b4 is, I think, easier to deal with than giving up the, di the diagonal after queen d6. Because queen d6, okay, he took with the knight. So b4. If he doesn't do anything, I can take and go knight a5, I think. Do I have anything better than b4? I mean, I could go knight a5 straight away. But is that enough pressure? Knight a5 if queen c2, rook c8. Knight a5 if queen d1. Then knight c4. Knight c4, b c4. Weakens his b pawn. And if he plays queen b4, hmm. I actually should also be considering h5, I think. I don't think h5 is a bad move. It's very risky, but I don't think it's bad. Okay, for now I'm just gonna go rook c8. And then decide later if I want to go knight a5 or b4. Because b4... I can still go b4 if he goes back to f3 because the pawn is attacked twice. Yeah, rook c8 wasn't a good idea. <clears throat> Bishop a6 is now with tempo. I completely missed that.
So I'm thinking knight a5, queen b4, knight c4, knight c4, bc4, a b5, a b5, queen b5, I think I'm gonna have to go knight a5. I don't see anything better. Uh, and now knight c4. once I take on d2 then I have rook b8 Yeah, rook c8 was bad. I should not have undefended a6. I, I didn't think about that. Because he wouldn't have had a4 had I left my rook on a8. So now, now I take on a4, and if he takes with the queen, I have knight b2. If he takes with the rook, I have a5. So I think that's fine. I don't want to give up a pawn if I don't have to. not actually that clear to me where the queen's gonna go if I go a5 here. Because I now have ideas of rook c6, rook b6, which do seem very strong, but I have to watch out for bishop takes c4. Of course, he, he doesn't really have queen b7 because I can go bishop d7, bishop c6. That bishop on f4 is extremely annoying. Okay, so now I'm thinking, what if I go rook c6? He has to take on c4. I take with the pawn, 
which is another tempo on the queen. The queen moves away. I have both queen d5 and bishop d5. And once I take with the bishop, I actually have rook f6. Once I play bishop d5. So rook c6, bishop c4. dc4. If he goes queen b5, I can go bishop d5. Do I have anything better? I don't think so. So I'm just gonna go rook c6. I like rook c6. <clears throat> it seems like a weird move, but the bishop on f4 is preventing me from including my my pieces. And I want to get the d5 square for my bishop and my queen. Because by playing g4 he weakened his light squares. And it's not as if he can play c4, because I'll have a pawn on c4. Okay, so now he wants to go b3, if I go rook b6. Uh, In which case I don't have enough protection for my a5 pawn. I feel like I have to get my other rook into play, so I'm thinking of a move like queen a8. <sighs> Which is at least a tempo move if he plays. b3, but he may have rook c4. And on dc4, bishop e4. So maybe I can simply go bishop d7. Okay, bishop d7, and then I'm actually threatening rook f6. Wow, okay, I didn't see that. Bishop d7 threatens rook f6. Where he has to play... Wait, he has to go queen c1 now? How does he defend against rook f6? Rook f6... He has to go queen c1. Rook f6 is a very strange move. Rook f6, he has queen c1.
maybe now is the time to go f6 and e5 Okay, so f6, b3, knight d6. Yeah, that's not gonna be enough. Rook f6, queen c1, what can I do? Rook f6, queen c1. I'm wasting too much time, but I'm struggling to find a good plan. I think I'm just gonna go f6. I need to start preparing e5. If I don't push e5, I don't have much in this position. I think on b3 I'm gonna go e5. Takes, takes on f4, takes on d5. I don't think rook f6 gave me anything interesting because he has queen c1. And you know, at least b3 weakens the c3 pawn, so... After knight b6, he really isn't threatening that much. I, I can just go e5 next. I think, I think. And on e5, he actually does have to, to take it once. And this is strange, but on, on b3 I could go knight d6, knight f7, e5. That's not too stupid.
sorry for not talking I'm trying to calculate rookie one <coughs> I, I think b3 isn't good because I can go knight d6, knight f7. So I think he's not playing b3. And if he goes rook e1, I can actually go e5 straight away because e5, d5, f5, tempo on the bishop, and if he takes, I go rook takes f3. So I think he cannot prevent e5. I think he has to move one of his pieces away. I'm trying to figure out the, the sacrifices on g6, but I I wouldn't say they work. Because again, I take take go e5, and once he takes, my rook is actually attacking the g6 square. And he doesn't have time for knight g5 because of rook g6. So I'm not sure what he does here. I mean... He, he could always play a move like knight d2 but I can take and go e5 at least he's catching up on time or at least I'm catching up on time He does play rook e1. Okay, e5, d, fe, attacking the bishop. If bishop takes, I take on f3. If the bishop moves, I take on f3. Yeah, I'm playing e5 straight away. Okay. So I guess rook takes. I don't want to open up diagonal if I don't have to. Wait, how does he defend this now? If I just go back, what can he do? He has to move the bishop away. And then I can go e4. I think, where does my rook go? I think rook c6. No, not rook c6, because now he can take, take, take with the knight attacking my rook. So I actually get two pieces for a rook. I mean, that's not bad, but I, I could have avoided that by playing rook c8. I just wanted to be ready for rook f6. I'm expecting he's going to move the bishop away, but if he takes, I'm just going to take back. And after e4, the knight moves, uh, I, I can go f5 and take on d4 with the bishop. Okay, e4. And f5, threatening bishop takes d4. And threatening f4. Okay, 
Okay, I, I achieved my pawn breaks. This has to be a good position now. I have the bishop pair, I have a huge center, I have a good attack, and I have an immediate threat of taking on d4. Which I, to be honest, don't see how he defends against all of that, because I would say f4 is a more serious threat than bishop takes d4. So for example, on queen d1, I just go f4. And my pieces come flying in. And of course, if he takes on f5, I play bishop takes f5, threatening to take on h3, threatening to take on d4. And he cannot defend both. And if he doesn't do anything, I can take on g4 twice. So I would say I'm winning, but with a minute on the clock, nobody knows. I hope he doesn't flag. Come on, come on, come on. Okay. I'm winning a pawn now. <clears throat> he just has to decide which one he wants to give up. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. I'm very happy with this game. I'm extremely... He, he has no way to, to defend against both threats now. This is just overwhelming. Yes! Okay. Let's analyze the game. Uh, okay. Yeah, g4 is, is weird. Queen b3 is still okay, but g4... Okay, yeah, bishop e6. Wait, he can go knight g5 here? I thought I could just take that and... Okay, so here's what I was thinking. If knight g5 here takes... Bishop takes pawn f6, bishop f4, bishop f7, and e5. I thought I had to be better here. Let's have a look at that. If knight g5, knight g5, bishop g5, f6, bishop... Okay, the engine gives a bishop h4 and bishop f7. Well, I am slightly better here. Okay, bishop d3. I had f5 straight away, okay. Yeah, and rook c8 is just a bad move, I knew that. a4, knight, a5. Wow. Takes, takes, a5. Rook c6. Takes here. Rook f6, it says queen c1 and a4, and it's equal. f6 is a blunder. Wow, I thought I had a great position after f6. He just goes rook a1 and on e5? Doesn't this lose a piece? Wait, what? Ah, I just lose the a5 pawn. Yeah, rook e1, e5. Yeah. Yeah, this is over. I just take on h3. Okay, I'm I'm very happy with this game. I have to say, uh, thank you for watching. Uh, again, hope you're having great holidays. Uh, stay tuned for more chess, and see you tomorrow. Bye bye.